Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before I get straight into all the uh, tips, the basic tips for beginners, make sure to go down below, subscribe to my channel, turn post notifications on, and comment down below what else you want to see from me. And yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first tip I would recommend for you guys to get is plugins. Plugins are extremely important as they make uh, your work progress a lot faster and easier and more efficient. I, I will recommend a few plugins right here that I use. I'm going to scroll through all the plugins that I use and I'll show you the most important ones and I'll leave the links down below for the most important ones that I personally use. Okay, the, the main plugins I use uh, currently in studio is Building Tools by F3X, uh, which makes uh, uh, editing parts a lot easier rather than just using the the basic uh, select move scale and rotation uh, tools another important one I use is load character light and easy insert which go hand in hand because you can load any character from uh, Roblox that you like and then uh, the dress uh, the easy insert dress NPCs allows you to edit their clothes and hats uh, with ease the final plugins are the rig editor which allows me to edit any kind of rig or create a rig on a character for me to animate etc and stravant gap fill and extrude uh, is also extremely imp uh, important to fill in uh, annoying gaps that you find in your builds okay step two is for people that are more interested in making more detailed and more appealing looking environments rather than just sticking a bunch of parts together and just uh, using the typical uh, part system that is in Roblox itself and that is by using uh, Blender. Now I'm going to show you a few basics of a few uh, key things that I tend to do which is like making rocks, making uh, trees, stuff like that, little environmental things that um, can make a huge difference overall in your game. Okay so if once you've uh, installed Blender, if you don't already have it, um, you're going to start out with. Uh, actually, I'll show you. If you go file new, general. Okay, so you'll start with this environment. You just want to go ahead and delete everything. And to get started, let's. Uh, I'll show you an example of uh, a rock and a tree stump or a tree. To begin with a tree, I tend to uh, add mesh cylinder. And once I've added a cylinder, this has too many faces on it, as you can see here. Uh, if I select faces, each one of these is a face, and I don't want this many faces. I want to uh, go for the more low poly look. So if I delete this, add mesh cylinder, and if I see on the bottom left where it says add cylinder, you click on it, and vertices 32 is too many for me. I want to go for something like 8. So as you can see, there's less faces and you get the more low poly look with it at the same time so what i want to do is create the tree it the tree stump itself so i'm going to select the top face by going in edit mode by pressing tab and clicking on faces here and i just want to pull this up and then press s to scale and then pull it in so the tree gradually gets thinner at the top okay so once i've added that i want to go ahead and add leaves for example so if i click add mesh uh, ecosphere and then let's move it up so i can press s to scale and then x to scale on the x axis and then s to scale again and y to scale on the y axis once I've done that, I've kind of got like a flat uh, flat thing of leaves. And then if I press S again and Z, scale on the Z axis, I can make a tree like this. Now this was very quick and doesn't really look amazing, but you can achieve something a lot better looking if you put a little bit more effort in. Okay, to create a rock, I go to add mesh ecosphere again. Move it to the side over here so I can see it properly. Once I've done that, I want to s to scale on the x axis again s to scale on the z axis again s to scale on the y axis again and once i've done that i've kind of got like a 
a bland uh, rock right here but if I click on this little circle here for proportional editing or you can press O instead and then press tab to enter edit mode and select any face you kind of want and then just move it around so you have more of a rocky rock I guess okay once that is done and you're happy uh, with the models you have created you want to go ahead and import them into uh, Roblox Studio so to do that you want to press file export FBX and then save them wherever you want and name it whatever you want once that is done you want to go into studio just remove these you want to go into meshes right click and add assets or import and then go to wherever you saved it import it and just click apply okay so once your uh, me meshes have imported you will see them in your game tab here under meshes you want to select them all right click insert with location and then it will bring them into your workspace as you can see i have both the rocks and the tree here so then you can go ahead and you know just color them to whatever you'd like and then you can begin uh, messing around with them and you can still edit them in studio uh, to make it look like there's a variation even of rocks even though there isn't by doing things like this okay for part three it's a more uh, less important but it's extremely overlooked and it can help with uh, in your future this tends to happen for more new developers uh, which aren't really uh, that organized and such uh, which can be a problem in the future when you have loads of models and meshes in your game so to begin with this you want to go ahead and name all your assets so then it's easier to access a large amount of assets all at once in the future for example I'll name this leaves and this I don't know log and then you can name these for example rock so now you have each mesh named for example but which is handy however you can go even further and add folders so we can go ahead and add a folder for rocks and then we can put all the uh, rocks and meshes into these folders so I want to go ahead and combine these two into a model and name it tree and then that can go in trees so now if you use the plugin I use and shift C to copy and paste you can see it's all going into the folder however if I use the normal select tool it goes outside the folder by copying and pasting and to do that I used the plugin I recommended earlier in the video which is building tools by F3X and you select an asset and you just press shift C and it du duplicates it right over it okay so step four is an extremely handy and very simple uh, tip to make your places look a lot more um, appealing in a sense so it's a lot nicer to look at and it looks more detailed with just a few clicks of a button so for example what you want to do is add a sun rays effect what this will do is when you look at the sun it'll create like a, an effect of a sun ray which makes it look a lot more realistic so if I cut this as you can see it disappears put it back in and then you can edit the intensity as you can see so it completely blinds you when you look at it or it's just like a little fade of a sun ray and you can adjust the amount it spreads by so you feel free to mess around with that another part in the lighting tab would be the bloom effect this just adds a bit of a 
I'd say more of a cartoony feel to your games. A lot of simulators use this. As you can see, your map looks a lot more blue and such, making it look a lot more cartoony, more appealing for children. As for the other lighting effects, I don't really use them as much. I tend to use a sky and then you can add a custom skybox or just steal one out of the toolbox, but I wouldn't really recommend using the toolbox for this. You can adjust the, the star count and such and all these things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully you've learned a few things from it. If you guys are interested in some more detailed, more like uh, higher level things, you can check out my video in the link in the description. And I appreciate the support uh, you guys gave me on that video. But other than that, uh, please subscribe, uh, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.